OHN and vinegar. This looks like molasses. Is there molasses in there? There is no molasses. Oh, we darn. don't use we don't use molasses in Korean natural farming. We only use sugar. So our SES soak or our seed start solution is going to consist of a one to five hundred ratio of fermented plant juice, a one to five hundred ratio of brown rice vinegar or any live vinegar works as well. If you have a homemade vinegar, it works really good. Uh, you do want to avoid white vinegar. Distilled white vinegar is not what we're looking for. And a one to 1,000 of OHN. I've actually prepped a 1,000 uh, milliliters of water. And it doesn't have to be distilled water. It doesn't have to be RO. Your tap water in general is just fine as long as there's no chlorine or chloramine in it. If there's chlorine or chloramine, you're going to have to buy some spring water or some distilled water that doesn't have that in it. Um, I personally think spring water works better than distilled, but that's up to your own personal preferences. The reason why I use milliliters is because it's just easier for me to do the math. One to 1,000 means one milliliter per thousand milliliters. If you're gonna use gallons or cups or ounces, you're gonna have to do a little bit of math to find out what that ratio is. So for me, again, I'm just gonna go with a big bucket. Also, we're doing a larger amount because we're gonna be starting uh, quite a few different types of seeds. Um, I have pipettes. I like these, but you can use any type of syringe or measuring thing. One thing that I don't do is I don't put this directly into my FPJ or my inputs. I go ahead and pour those into a separate container so I'm not cross-contaminating. This happens to be unripe plum fermented plant juice that I made uh, last year. In general, we want you to use this within six months. However, with proper storage, it can go much longer. So when we're smelling it, it smells a little bit alcoholic, so it, it kind of went a little far on the fermentation, um, but it's not too bad. And right now I haven't made any fresh FPJ this year, so we're gonna run with it. Ideally, if you have more than one FPJ, you wanna use more than one source, but then you have to be able to do that math and know that your one to 500 ratio is now one to 1,000 if you have two, one to 2,000 if you have four. Um, again, more than one fermented plant juice is, in my opinion and experience, preferable to a single source. So since we have a thousand milliliters, how many milliliters of fermented plant juice are we putting in? Uh, one. <laughs> <laughs> are you sure it's two? We often say math. We're, we are not mathematicians. We are farmers. But in this case, we're I'm trying to make really it easy. He's I'm actually just, really good know. at math. <clears throat> two yeah, milliliters. Two. So we're going to use our pipette and measure out two milliliters. Wait a second. What did you say this was? Fermented plant juice. Made up from what? Made from unripe plums. So how's that not fermented fruit juice? Because it's not ripe. Okay. So in Korean natural farming, if it is an unripe fruit, it is still a fermented plant juice. If it is ripe, then it is a fermented fruit juice and that is used at a different time in the plant's life cycle. So, I mean, I just put that in. You can see how little I poured. There's still a ton left. Actually, let's try it. Ooh, oh, yum. Okay, that's fantastic. Wow, super good. Um, okay, we need to make some drinks with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For real. That needs bubbly water and a splash. That could go of, into the morning smoothie too. That could go into morning, that should go into morning smoothie. Yeah. Actually, we'll start doing that. Um, totally. <clears throat> our little side notes, yeah, <laughs> delicious. <for real. laughs> so the plants will not get this anymore. We're gonna save this for human exploration. <laughs> uh, we do keep this with a breathable lid. So this is just a piece of paper towel. I basically, you know, switch it out now and then. I probably need to put a new one on. Um, but 
Yeah, I mean, you can see, let's see, I don't know if you guys can see in here. You could tell from what I poured out that there's no mold or growth or weirdness on this. So as long as that's not happening and it doesn't like get you totally schnockered drunk right away, it's good to use as a fermented fr fermented plant juice. All right, so our vinegar. Brown rice vinegar is something that we use in Korean natural farming. It's one of the, the major inputs and actually all three of these inputs are the base for every KNF recipe. The fermented plant juice, the OHN and the BRV are the three inputs that are in every recipe. So BRV, also known as brown rice vinegar, when I first started doing KNF, I was like, I can't find it anywhere. Like, I don't understand because this just says rice vinegar. It's the same thing. You can also utilize any uh, natural vinegar that you want. So Bragg's makes a great apple cider vinegar that has the mother in it. You can make it yourself. You can make your own vinegar after making fermented plant juice, which I can't believe I didn't do with the plums. Yeah. And you That's can do ridiculous. that, if, that if, you, misstep. if you have a little bit of Bragg's um, apple cider with the <laughs> mother, you can use that to kickstart the vinegar that you make with your leftover FPJ and stuff. Now, vinegar, also one to 500. I probably will not drink the rest of this. <laughs> I'm definitely not fucking drinking that. James doesn't like vinegar. No. So Keep your salt weird. and vinegar chips. Oh my God, they're so good. Not a fan. Vinegar is delicious. I love vinegar. So again, two milliliters of vinegar. No. <laughs> and then we have OHN, Oriental Herbal Nutrient. So OHN is made up of five different herbs that we ferment first and then tincture out. And so it's basically a vodka tincture. It's ginger, garlic, cinnamon, angelica, and licorice. This is my little um, cheater way of taking it. So this sits behind my sink. And in the morning, I have a little shot glass that's sitting there and I just do a couple pumps and, and uh, chuck it down the hatch because I firmly believe that this has kept me much healthier than I used to be. I heard you could put turmeric in there too. No. No? Yeah, I'm sure you heard that you can put... Okay, so here's the deal, everybody. The turmeric thing... Can you make tinctures that are not OHN that include other herbs? Yes, absolutely, you can. For you. It is not OHN any longer. You can omit one of the herbs. So if you can't find like ginger or angelica or something, you can omit it. Just don't put it in. But don't add something else instead. It's no longer OHN. Chris's original OHN video, he talks about adding turmeric. You really shouldn't do that. If you do, it's not OHN. Great for human health, I'm sure. Turmeric is an amazing anti-inflammatory. It's a, a fabulous herb. But if you add it to this, it's no longer OHN. So one milliliter, because this is a one to 1,000 ratio. We have 1,000 milliliters of water. We're going to add one milliliter of OHN. Give it a little stir and that's it. So as you can see, it pretty much just looks like water. It's hardly anything there to make a difference, but it makes a huge difference in the whole cycle of the plant. Okay, now my little hack, I've gone through this quite a few times on how to label plants. I used to do plant tags in the cup, which is really fun when your children come up and decide to do this type of thing. Um, I've done stickers in the past, which work out okay, unless you accidentally use a felt tip marker and then it gets spilled on. Maybe not the best idea. Um, also, they can get wet and kind of schmoosh off or fall off and then they're lost. What I've come down to now is this is a smudge-free wet eraser pen, pen. So it's the kind that you have to actually get wet and kind of scrub off. It works great. So I can just do orange turbo and I'm writing directly on the glass. That way I know exactly what this is and it's not coming off unless I like get it wet and rub at it, which I'm not gonna do. We decided this morning that we're gonna actually plant probably a third to one half of our full term outdoor plants with Orange Turbo. So this is going to be a huge hash project. Um, and ideally it'll be available sometime probably what, 2023 for purchase in California. Yeah. He's the hash maker. I don't do that. 
So I'm like, you dry it and cure it and do all, I'm like, oh, I don't know. I'll just grow it, you can make the hash. So we have our 50 orange turbo seeds. We're gonna go ahead and put those in the cup. And that's it. We are officially set on those. So those will sit overnight. Um, I really like to do a 12, eight to 12 hour soak. Um, if they're really, 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 really virulent seeds, they'll actually crack and pop tails within six to eight hours. Uh, if they're a little bit older, sometimes they won't crack and pop tails at all. And uh, if they're somewhere in the middle, you know, at that 12 hour mark, they're definitely cracked open. They're definitely starting to try and grow. Fig pollinators. Yes. Is that, that probably might be, I don't know specifically what species gross. of wasp. You gross. Which species of wasp, not wash. Which species, I'm not drunk, I swear. <laughs> the I OHN. Yeah. I didn't drink the OHN. Drinking. I didn't drink the OHN. It's right here. <clears throat> um, yeah, the, the wasps that are parasitic and or fig pollinators. Oh, I guess the fig pollinators would be parasitic too. No. No, they're just eating or the figs. Larva, I guess, would be their larva. parasitic. Well, but Do does it eat? eat the, no, it eats. I don't know if they eat yeah. it, right? It's just protecting them. Okay. I don't know. I don't remember. All I know is that they lay eggs in figs, and I definitely ate fig newtons as a kid. And now he doesn't and eat And it's figs. a little, well, no, because figs are gross. Have you eaten a fig mm -hmm. as an adult? Yeah, not some of them are good. A fig newton, anyway? No, not a fan of the fig newtons. Okay, well, that's what I'm saying. An I actual ate a fig, fig newton as an adult, and I was like, oh my God, how did I like this as a child? You know? The fruit consumes the wasp? What? Now it lays an egg in there. Once it's pollinated yeah. like a black widow. Oh, does it crawl in there and die? Oh! Does maybe the, that was what it was. I don't remember. Does the big, does the wasp, I, uh... I don't know. I know I, there's a I, wasp involved and you eat something yep. wasp-like and I'm, you know... I was Generally grossed out by it too, I have to say. Like when I found that out as an adult, <laughs> I kind of quit eating figs because like when it was crunchy, all I could think about was that I was eating crunchy little wasp larvae and eggs. Yeah, now and we have to go Google shit because so. we look like idiots. <laughs> <laughs> we don't remember. I've blocked it from my memory. Yeah. I don't want to know about it. Yeah. I loved figs. I'm so disappointed. I'm you over it now. You should eat bugs if you're, you know, need to survive. I'm, or, I'm over it now. You know. I, I like figs again. I think they're delicious. I also kind of got over the idea that we don't eat bugs because I'm pretty sure I eat bugs all the time. Oh, I've definitely so, eaten uh, a bunch of bugs. Just, Everyone's eaten a bunch yeah, of bugs in their life. We just don't want to If you eat cereal, you've eaten some bugs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what do you saying. mean? <clears throat> There's bug parts in cereal for sure. What kind of bug parts? All kinds of bug parts. You know the um, FDA allows a certain amount of bug parts and stuff in all kinds of foods. Like hot dogs and are allowed so many little insect parts and or rat hair or whatever. You can look it up. Just saying. <clears throat> so if you want to join us for diet tips and tricks, James will tell you all kinds of stories that make you not want to eat anymore. Let's talk about ketchup next, shall we? Any second. Pretty sure that would have already happened if that was the case. I'm just yeah, saying like... Give me any second. Wormhole could open up right under our feet. It's entirely possible. It's entirely possible the sun could actually explode at any given second and You're just right. engulf us all. It is. That's Aliens more plausible than black hole opening but up under our feet. none of it's very likely is my point. <laughs> Okay, I did blueberry muffin. It's probably four or five years old. You smoke it? Fuck no. Hell no. It's not that bad. It just fell apart. <laughs> it's kind of bad. It's really fun if you put BM on there because uh, you talk to a doctor, a BM is something totally different. <laughs> we will be editing the hell out of this. <laughs> We're going to do a retake of this tomorrow for, uh, <laughs> for the YouTube channel. This will be the outtakes. You guys get to experience this. <laughs> uh, have a bunch of solution left, uh, but I'm out of cups.